Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Colleen and today I'm going to talk about all the Canadian books that I own that I have read and a couple that I don't own that I remember that I have read. Uh, so let's just get right into it. These are going to be in no particular order. They're just however they're stacked on my table. So I guess we'll start with A Stranger in the House by Sherry Lupina. This is a thriller, which I really enjoyed. Uh, it was one of, it was the third thriller that I've read. And uh, Sherry Lupina is a Canadian. It is all about this couple who lives this seemingly ideal, idyllic life, but it's not all that it appears to be. Next, I have Vicki Delaney's book, Rescue Murder Gentleman. This is part of her year-round Christmas mystery series. Of course, someone gets murdered, and someone who's not the police tries to solve it. Um, Vicki Delaney is Canadian. She writes cozy mysteries. She has two other pen names too. One of them is Eva Gates, and I really enjoyed this book, so looking forward to reading more cozy Christmas mysteries. Next, we'll talk about Vienna Nocturne by Vivian Shotwell. I believe she is actually a Haligonian. So, at least currently. Uh, this is about a singer who's a teenager in 18th, late 18th century London and uh, how that kind of unravels. This is a really interesting book and it was given to me by my parents and I did enjoy it and she's currently singing. Uh, then we have Various Positions by Martha Schwabis. This is probably one of my favorite Canlet books that I read last year. It takes place in a ballet school and um, it's about teenagers discovering their sexuality. Uh, the best description that I have read for this uh, is by Lynn Cody. She has a little blurb here on the back of the book and she says the ever shifting fault lines between sex lives and sexual obje objectification of teen girls are traversed traversed with the artful nuance of precision of ballet itself, a gripping and unflinching novel. Uh, so this one is really good, I really enjoyed it. And now we're gonna move right along. Next, I have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is all over booktube, so I'm sure you've heard of this. I read it last year and absolutely loved it. Emily St. John Mandel is from Canada, though I believe she's living in the States currently. And this book is set part in Toronto and part in the end of the world. And it centers around Shakespeare. Uh, so you have the beginning of the book opening with them putting on a play of King Lear and a character dies. Then the plague happens and then you have this group of traveling performers who are going around performing orchestrated music and Shakespeare plays. So this was really good. I'd highly recommend it. It is Canadian. Then I have Bloodletting and Miraculous Cures by Vincent Lamb. This is a short story collection based on Dr. Lamb's own personal experiences in residency and it has, I think it was four, many more than four. Twelve stories that are separate but also interweave. So it does kind of follow a plot but it's not a novel. That's how I would describe it. It focuses on the same characters at different points in their lives and uh, their practice mostly in emergency medicine, uh, which was very interesting. Of course, I work at a hospital, not as a medical professional, as an administrative professional, but uh, this was a really super cool book and I would love to recommend it to everyone. And it won the Scotiabank Giller Prize and uh, yeah, I would highly recommend it. It was a fantastic book. Then I have Rue by Kim Choi. Uh, this is a fantastic lyrical novel about what being a Vietnamese Canadian is like, what it was like traveling from Vietnam during the war to Canada, and it also talks a lot about motherhood as well, which I found very interesting. As you can see, it's just a short little thing. I would highly recommend it. This book won Canada Reads in 2015, and it was fantastic. A theme that you may notice as we go through these books is that a lot of them won awards for Canadian literature. 
I'm not saying that's why I bought them, but it may have been a contributing factor. So then, I have Us Conductors by Shawn Michaels, and this, of course, was also a Scotiabank Giller Prize winner. This one was like partly a cover by, as you can see, it's super pretty and it's great. But it's also, the story was really cool. It was about Lev Terman, uh, who invented the Thurman, which you may uh, know from the Star Trek theme song, and about how he was in love with a girl named Clara, and, and uh, how that all progressed, and how his uh, earlier life in Russia, being an inventor, meeting Lenin, and then coming to the States and then thinking that the theremin was going to be this great weapon that could turn the States communist was in there. It was very interesting seeing him being the spy when it wasn't really something that he really was himself. I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, it definitely does make some sense to me, put that way. But it was just an absolutely fascinating read. Definitely not one of my favorites, but um, Sean is Canadian, so he's on the list. And then we have one of my probably favorite Camelot books that I've read, and that is The Better Mother by Jen Suk Fong Lee. It's just a, an amazing story. So it follows two different storylines. One is of a, a poor family who lives outside of Vancouver in a farming community during the Depression. And then you have the story of a, a young second generation Chinese Canadian gay man who's living at the height of the AIDS epidemic. So it's just an absolutely fantastic book. Uh, it really questions, raises a lot of questions about motherhood and the way that we view our mothers. And um, I would highly recommend this one. Then we have 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis. Uh, this book won the Giller Prize. It was also the winner of Canada Reads last year, uh, although my book cover here does not have that brand on it. This is kind of a mythological book. It starts off with Hermes and Apollo talking in a bar about how awful humans are and wondering if another animal had human conscious would they inherently be evil? So they go to a vet clinic and give 15 dogs human consciousness. All the dogs die. So I didn't like that book very much. I mean, it's philosophically interesting, but I did not enjoy it. Then I have Birdie by Tracy Lindbergh. This was one of the 2016 selections for Canada Reads. This was a fantastic book. It's about missing and murdered indigenous women and all of the issues that they have sometimes within their community. It takes place on the west coast and it's about a girl trying to find out what happened to her mom. It was just a moving book. I found it harder to read than some of the other books, just uh, the style was a little bit jumpy, but uh, it was highly enjoyable and I would recommend it. Uh, oh, obviously, um, it's also written by an indigenous author, so, you know. And then finally, for that stack, I have The Juliet Stories by Carrie Snyder. This is an autobiographical novel based on her experience growing up in Nicaragua uh, during its post-revolutionary war. Uh, her parents were peace activists and I think that's about all that I want to say about that. Uh, this was not one of my favorites that I read. It's told through a child's perspective, which might be why, but it, uh, it was a book that I read by a Canadian author. Okay, then I have the two Margaret Atwoods that I have read. I have The Handmaid's Tale, which I don't think I really need to give you a description of, and Ailey, uh, Ailey's Grace, which I also don't think I need to give you a description of. As you can see, these are the books that go with the other two emblem books that I have. Uh, they're beautiful editions, and I really love them. I think it's really clever how they did this with that one. Anyways, so that's my Atwood. 
Then I have two fantasy series to round this out here. So the first one is called the Nocturnus Magia novels by Sylvia Izzo Hunter. It is a trilogy about a magical university in a world that's similar to ours but different. I would say that it is somewhere between Victorian and Edwardian that it takes place. And it's about primarily this boy who witnesses some bad things, gets taken to an estate where he meets Sophie. The boy's name is Gray. He meets Sophie, who he falls in love with, runs away with, and then there's some discoveries, and then the rest of them happen. Uh, so we have the Midnight Queen, Lady of Magic, and A Season of Spells. It was an absolutely entrancing series. I really, really love this and highly recommend it. Just a great, great series. I'm really looking forward to seeing what else uh, she writes because it was just so fantastic. Then, and finally, for the books that I have with me today, I have uh, Serafina and Shadow Scale by Rachel Hartman. She is a Canadian. This book is, or these books, the series, this duology, is about dragons. So it's super cool. It's uh, very highly politically motivated and explores a lot of different cool politics things. And it's just fantastic. Would highly recommend reading this series. And yeah, so that's all the books that I have with me. So I'm going to go through this few books that I don't have with me. First, we're going to go with The Break, um, which of course, if you've been following me for a while, you know is my favorite book that written by a Canadian. Uh, it is, again, about missing and murdered Indigenous women. It starts off with a sexual assault and then goes through different members of a family to kind of unravel what happened, who it happened to, and what's really going on in this community. It is a fantastic book. It was one of the books chosen for Canada Reads last year. Of course, it lost to 15 dogs, but more controversially, it was eliminated in the first round for very poor reasons, uh, which was very disappointing. If you're going to read a Canadian book, this is the book that I'd recommend you read. Then I also have Obasan by Joe Kwaga. I don't know how to pronounce her name, I'm very sorry. Uh, this is about the Japanese internment and how it affected the generation of children who were growing up in that environment. Here on the East Coast, we don't learn a lot about the Japanese internment. It's not one of the big things that we're taught about in school. I hear it is on the West Coast, which makes sense. Um, so I didn't know very much about the Japanese internment before reading this book, though I did know it happened. So I would highly recommend this book. Also fantastic. <clears throat> Both of those books I have lent out to friends currently, uh, so hopefully I'll get them back soon because the rest of my books are missing them. Then the two books that I read uh, while in school that I know for sure were Canadian literature I have in my head are The First Stone, um, whose author I forget, but there'll be a picture somewhere. That was written by a Haligonian and is about a boy who throws a rock off an overpass and causes a serious traffic accident and uh, the repercussions of that accident. It is a YA novel, so some of the things that happen in it are typical YA and would not happen in real life, but it was a really, really beautiful book and I did enjoy it when I read it. And then I have another one that comes to mind, I think, I believe it was called Lures. Uh, I can't remember who it's by. And I believe this one takes place in Labrador uh, and it is about a girl who's trying to break free of her family. Um, but it is also about the damage that the priesthood created when it molested small boys. So that one has a lot in it. I still don't know how I feel about it even though it's been, gosh, 10 years about since I read it. But it's a book. Yeah. Anyway, so those are all the Canadian books. If you've read any of these, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to talk to you about any of these books. Uh, if you didn't hear about any of these books before and there's something that you seem to think might uh, suit your reading preferences, also let me know about that. I would love to see you folks reading some more Canadian literature. But yeah, that's all I have to say for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope the uh, 
Read Athon is going well for all of you, and we'll see you in the next video.